What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the workshop and welcome to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we are going to make a bandsaw box, but this is just a little bit different take on what you might consider a traditional bandsaw box. It has a top and a bottom, holds a deck of cards, and also has some inkjet transfer. Stick around, check it out. With the events of 2020 that we've all been dealing with, staying home, playing board games and card games has become quite popular around my house, probably around yours as well. One of the games that we tend to play a lot is a card game, but it comes in a little thin cardboard box and that gets all torn up really quick. So I thought I could use this piece of Aspen and make a new box for it. Now I'm gonna call this a bandsaw box because it is gonna be made entirely on the bandsaw, but it is not gonna be what you might typically think of when you think of a bandsaw box. A typical bandsaw box, you would slice off one side and then basically bandsaw out a drawer. We're not gonna quite do it like that. I'm going to basically saw this into panels. We're gonna re-glue it and it's going to be a box with a lid that fits over the top. The very first thing I need to do is to square up both ends of this, of course, on the bandsaw. Now I'm going to use a compass to lay out the next four cuts. The compass makes it really easy to lay out the cuts nice and straight along all the edges. I'm going to cut these two edges first, then I'm going to cut the ends. Then I'll lay it out and we'll cut a piece that will make the top. I'm going to use this little crosscut sled for all the cuts for this project. It's basically the same thing you might make for your table saw, just a little bit smaller. I made all four cuts using this exact same method. Now for some reason the camera quit running after this first cut, but my process was to cut all of the side pieces first and then cut the front and the back. I figured it'd be easier to hide the cut in the grain of the wood if it wasn't on the side of the box. And here's what I ended up with after making those first four cuts. Now I'll take that center block and lay out the cut that'll make the top of the box. And here's all the pieces for the outer box. Now I'm going to use the block of wood that's left from the center of this piece and do the exact same process to make a smaller inner box. This time though, the camera didn't quit. I don't know why it's been doing that recently. I think maybe the sawdust might be getting to it. And this is the very last cut and it'll make up the bottom of the box. So now I have all the slices ready to be glued up. One thing to keep in mind if you're going to attempt something like this, really important to make sure you account for the kerf of your bandsaw blade. You are going to lose some width to that, so you need to add a little bit to your dimensions to make sure that once you glue this thing together, it's going to fit whatever you intend to go inside. Of course, if you don't really have a specific measurement in mind, it really is not going to make any difference. But since I'm building these to a specific size, I got to make sure that I account for that. Otherwise, it's going to be too narrow and it's not going to fit. And now I can begin applying some glue and getting these boxes glued together. I'm going to use some masking tape as my clamp. Oh, it looks like a box. I'm checking for square as I go. There's one. Just let this glue dry for a little while. Once the glue's dry and I've removed all the tape, I'll sand all the sides nice and flush on my oscillating sander. So now this thing is almost ready for some finish, but one thing I want to do is add a little notch in here to help hold on to this lower box when you're removing the lid. When the box is closed, it's a little bit hard to grab a hold of the bottom so you can remove the top. What I need to do is make a couple of little indents in here, basically just some notches to help grab a hold of the inner box while you remove the lid. Now in hindsight, this would have been a lot easier before I glued it together, but it didn't, obviously. So. We just need to figure out how to do this cleanly 
to avoid tear out or breaking these pieces. What I ended up doing was just clamping a piece of wood inside the box. And hopefully, now I can get in there with a Forstner bit. I'm just going slow and steady as I'm drilling this little notch. I'm only using about half of the drill bit. I'm not pressing too hard and just taking my time. And now for the fun part. Hand sanding! Yay! There is one more thing I want to do really quick before we move on to the finish. Since this is replacing the cardboard packaging for a certain card game, I thought, well, maybe we should put the logo on the box. I'm going to use the inkjet transfer method to transfer the card game's logo onto this box. That way, we'll always know what's inside. If you guys want to see a little bit more details about the inkjet transfer method, I've made a whole video on doing the process. It's really quick and simple and a great way to add a pop of color or some personalization to your project. Once I have my image printed out, I'm going to carefully tape it onto the project where I need it. And then using a J roller, I'll press the ink into the wood. Again, if you want more details, there's a link in the video description. And for the big reveal. Haha, <laughs> cool. Who doesn't love playing this game? Guys, just a couple of words really quick. Obviously, this is not my logo, and there are some things you need to keep in mind if you are going to use a logo for another company. Now, I am not a copyright or trademark expert by any means, but I do know that you can't just use somebody's logo to put on a bunch of products to sell, to make money, and that sort of thing. This is entirely for personal use. I am not gonna be selling this thing. If you guys intend to use a company's logo, please make sure that you know what you're doing. I see a lot of things that people put out there for sale with other companies, logos, teams, that sort of thing on there. I believe technically you're not supposed to do that, but just be aware of what you're doing and be cautious. I don't want anybody to get in any trouble, but I want you guys to know this is strictly for personal use in my home, so I'm not worried about it. Now I'll just apply a few coats of satin spray lacquer. This stuff has been really hard to find lately. It seems like everybody is out of stock. I had to visit many different stores before I finally found some. Once the lacquer's dry, now all I need to do is take the flimsy taped up packaging throw it out and now we can put our cards in this nice wooden box. This box turned out really cool. I like how the grain is continuous all the way around the outside. Almost like it was cut from one block of wood. Oh wait. Well there you have it guys. Hope you enjoyed this project. A little bit different take on a bandsaw box but still made completely with the bandsaw. <laughs> Now maybe you guys don't have a need for a box like this, that's totally fine. If there's one thing I would like you to take out of this project though, that is to be creative, think outside of the box. How can you put your spin on an existing product or idea to make it your own? I want to encourage you to be creative. Just because a lot of people make something a certain way doesn't mean you have to put your own spin on it. Have fun, make cool stuff, and just have a good time doing it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. My camera focus is acting weird. Hey, that's better. All right. Mm. Ugh, why? Why do I pull that apart every time? What's up with that? Really?